Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for your nice introduction, uh, Tony. Uh, that's my absolute honor uh, and uh, pleasure uh, to be here. Uh, before starting uh, my talk, I have to tell you something. Uh, I, I had a couple of meetings recently, in recent months, and uh, uh, there was a meeting uh, uh, with uh, medical technology, and there was this young PhD, and she looked at me and said, you have a difficult job. It's a sad environment. The same thing happened. I was in a fundraising, and there was this artist painter, and she's, she used the same, the same term, uh, a sad environment. I looked at them and said, listen, uh, taking care of cancer patients as a nurse, physician assistant, uh, nurse practitioner, oncology nurse, physician, PharmD, is an honor and privilege. And by no means, uh, you know, People are sad there. Whenever I go to my work drive there in the morning, people are smiling, upbeat, ready to be part of the good fight against cancer. So thank you for what you do. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, inotuzumab ozogomycin and gemtuzumab ozogomycin induced liver toxicity. Something old, something new, and something to consider. I've had a, a handful of patients recently, and uh, I would like to that, uh, get your attention to this. This is conflict of interest. Uh, so uh, both INO and, and GO, uh, these are antibody drug conjugates. Uh, so INO uh, uh, works against CD22 positive uh, 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 ALL cells, and GO is against CD33 um, positive cells. They, they, they uh, have the same uh, payload, which is uh, calicomycin, and this is the main poison which kills the uh, leukemia cells. However, it can have certain side effects that we are going to talk. Uh, both are FDA approved and had been in uh, practice uh, for, for some time. And interesting that both of them uh, can cause liver toxicity and uh, sinusoidal obstructive syndrome, which is the new term for veno occlusive disease or VOD and they can cause thrombocytopenia, and actually they are uh, related. So uh, this is uh, um, uh, inotuzumab uh, ozogomycin and uh, uh, gemtuzumab ozogomycin. So I have five patients that I would like to discuss, and uh, I, 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 I believe uh, uh, they have important uh, clinical messages for a uh, day-to-day uh, practitioner. So this is the uh, patient number one, 42 years old, a uh, gentleman. He had paranoid schizophrenia and relapsed uh, BALL, which was Philadelphia positive. Um, and when he relapsed, uh, I started treating him with INO and ponatinib. Uh, yeah, uh, he actually uh, achieved remission uh, after two cycles, so I reduced the dose of ponatinib to, to uh, 15 milligram. And uh, uh, it was... Uh, um, after like five cycles of I know that uh, he started complaining of some fatigue. He had a fall. Uh, it was during the midst of COVID, and uh, the visits were all uh, uh, by um, uh, uh, remote. So he had a fall, which was surprising for a young uh, gentleman. And uh, he had this uh, mildly abnormal uh, uh, liver test. So uh, I uh, decided to hold uh, I know, ordered an abdominal ultrasound, which was quite abnormal. And uh, very sh shortly after, actually, he was admitted. Um, uh, he, because of his primary schizophrenia, he was not a transplant candidate. I didn't um, uh, use uh, blincito for him. He, he was afraid of needles. It, it, it was quite challenging for him. Unfortunately, uh, 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 I lost him. Uh, no liver biopsy or no uh, autopsy was done. Uh, the family uh, refused. And then I had another patient, 28-year-old, Hispanic Latino uh, female. She had a relapse in 2018, and then uh, I uh, uh, took over her care in 2022. Uh, she had a history of uh, pilocystic astrocytoma. She had resection. Um, uh, she had seizure, chronic seizure, refractory. She uh, is on three anti-seizure uh, medications, and then. She, um, I, I was uh, treating her with I know she reported right-sided abdominal pain. Her performance status uh, uh, started getting worse. She became very sleepy. And again, I did, uh, uh, this is the, her uh, liver enzymes. Uh, not uh, uh, 
uh, that uh, significant, but her performance status uh, uh, made me worried. Uh, and abdominal ultrasound was abnormal. And this time, I, I pushed for a, a liver biopsy. And it showed a, a very uh, significant hepatic congestion, which is uh, quite uh, abnormal. Uh, so I actually, I held, um, uh, uh, I know, um, uh, she uh, failed, for example, swallowing assessment. I had to put a, a G tube for her, and it took six months for her to, uh, to uh, have a normal performance uh, status back to her, to her baseline. Patient number three, this one is 66 year old Hispanic Latino female, BAL Philadelphia positive. She was on INO, and again, she started showing elevated liver enzymes, some mild thrombocytopenia. Uh, she was getting her uh, fifth cycle, and uh, liver ultrasound was abnormal. Again, I pushed for uh, uh, liver biopsy. I had my first uh, patient, so I uh, wanted to be more proactive here. And again, it showed uh, uh, hepatic congestion, sinusoidal congestion. Patient number four, again, another uh, Hispanic Latino uh, female, Philadelphia positive, who was on INO and, and ponatinib. And just after cycle one, day one of, of INO, uh, she uh, started having severe uh, right side abdominal pain, which required hospitalization. Her liver enzymes were mildly elevated, uh, abdominal ultrasound was abnormal, and uh, again, I, we. Uh, performed liver biopsy showed sinusoidal congestion. The fifth patient, 25 year old Hispanic Latino female, relapsed BAL Philadelphia negative. She relapsed after ALO and uh, uh, she was on INO. Actually, I treated her with INO back in 2020 after T cycles. She had elevated liver enzymes, so I held it. Uh, I treated her, her with, with um, uh, other uh, chemotherapy agents. Uh, such as vincristine, and then she had a progression. She had a, a nasal mass, which was a, a acute lymphoblastic uh, lymphoma. So I put her back on INO, and uh, after one cycle, again, her liver enzymes went up mild, and she was like fatigued, uh, tired. So I again did the liver biopsy, which showed uh, hepatic uh, sinusoidal congestion. And it's interesting, this is her uh, skin, as you see, uh, for the uh, fellows and residents, uh, we call it a spider angiomata, which is the stigmata of, uh, of chronic liver disease. So what is uh, uh, the link here, GO and INO-induced liver toxicity? There is good data, uh, like from phase two uh, of GO, that uh, uh, patients uh, could uh, develop like grade three and or grade four, grade four increased liver enzymes, uh, ASD, ALT, and TBLE. SOS was reported in, in, even in patients who did not go to transplant, 0.9%. In patients who go to transplant, the SOS rate is, is, is much higher. It goes up to 15%. For I know, again, uh, you could have elevated uh, liver enzymes. SOS was diagnosed in like 9% of patients, but uh, 67 of cases observed after post uh, uh, post transplant. And there are studies, uh, this is uh, like uh, uh, Pfizer actually worked with five uh, liver uh, specialists uh, in uh, academic centers, and they look at all the patients who got uh, uh, INO in different uh, clinical studies. Uh, there were like more than 600 patients, uh, uh, INO versus uh, standard chemo for ALL, and INO versus standard chemo for non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and they, they uh, 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 fish out like patients who uh, had uh, uh, liver injury. Uh, for um, gemtuzumab, uh, the, the data regarding SOS is, is, uh, is uh, quite uh, 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 valid. Uh, uh, so uh, um, uh, these days, actually, it's mostly uh, uh, administered for patients who have good risk AML as, as uh, part of induction and, and consultation. As you see in uh, uh, some studies, uh, like VOD was reported at around 5% earlier, uh, single agent use, but uh, uh, it was much higher in some studies up to like 89%. For I know uh, uh, the uh, the major uh, clinical study which resulted in the FDA approval was I know 
uh, weight clinical trial, uh, which was uh, presented with doc by Dr. Kantarjian from MD Anderson. And if you look at all grades, uh, 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 liver toxicity, uh, uh, it, it was uh, around uh, uh, all grades, uh, VOD, uh, mild, moderate, severe, it, it was ar around 14%. Uh, uh, if grade three or five was 18%. And uh, in patients who got uh, transplant, uh, after uh, I know it was 22.8%. And where, the, what were the risk factors for developing VOD uh, after transplant? It was the number of the alkylators, two versus one, and patients who had elevated TBD before transplant, uh, and patients who had elevated uh, liver enzymes uh, before uh, going to transplant. So uh, antibody drugs are considered a risk factor for, for VOD in, in allo patients. There are other risk factors. For example, we see more VOD in younger patients and uh, older adults. If patients have uh, poor performance status and comorbidities, they get more VOD. Underlying conditions, interesting patients who have like myelofibrosis or HLH, they are more prone to get uh, VOD. Uh, patients who have advanced disease, relapse uh, uh, refractory, if they have pre-existing liver disease, such as like chronic hepatitis, cirrhosis, uh, iron overload, that's important. We pay attention to the ferritin level. And then lines of, of, of chemotherapy, more than three lines of previous chemo uh, would be troublesome. Allo is more than auto. You can see VOD after auto. Even you can see it after like conventional chemotherapy. I have seen it in breast cancer patients. But it's more in um, allo. And then you see more uh, uh, VOD in haplotransplant compared with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, MOD or matched donor transplant. And oral busulfan is, is uh, uh, very notorious for ca causing uh, VOD, uh, cyclophosphonate as well. And then if patients uh, receive uh, uh, total body radiation, but these two drugs, uh, gemtuzumab and inotuzumab, are, are uh, risk factors for uh, receiving VOD. It comes in board exam for those who are going to do a board exam or recertification, remember this. So where does this happen? After my first patient, I started uh, 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 reading more of this. It starts in a, a small area of the liver, uh, called a space of this. This was a German uh, histologist uh, and anatomist. Uh, uh, interesting guy. He traveled uh, from uh, Germany to, to Japan, and he uh, taught uh, histology in Tokyo. He uh, described a space of this in uh, 1880. So that's where it is. It's uh, uh, between sinusoid space and, uh, and uh, hepatocytes. Uh, uh, so it's... Uh, like uh, um, whatever is happening in the sinusoid, uh, the, uh, the sinusoidal uh, cells, that um, uh, they, they um, uh, try to actually protect uh, normal liver cells or uh, hepatocytes uh, from direct uh, exposure to what is happening in the sinusoid. Sinusoids, uh, you have the plasma there, uh, red blood cells, then you can have endothelial injury to the, uh, the sinusoidal endothelial cells. Chemotherapy can cause this. And when these cells get injured, uh, it's interesting, you would see accumulation of the platelets. White blood cells go there. That's why you uh, develop thrombocytopenia. So the, the reason behind the thrombocytopenia in patients who get INO and gemtuzumab is not bone marrow suppression. It's actually plated consumption in the sinusoidal space. And one of the signs of advanced VOD is patients become platelet refractory. So if you are taking off transplant patients, uh, particularly in, in the uh, first three weeks after transplant, if patients are having increased weight and they are becoming uh, plated transfusion refractory, Think about VOD. Uh, this is uh, interesting. This is an um, animal study on, done on, on uh, cyanomolgus monkeys. It was uh, actually uh, uh, sponsored by, by Pfizer, and uh, they gave uh, this. They didn't use ino or gentuzumab, but they use a, a, a calicomycin conjugate. Um, uh, why in monkeys, uh, these monkeys, uh, 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 they are very good models for monoclonal antibodies and uh, antibody drug conjugates, uh, so that, they are, that's where they are used. They use very young monkeys, around like three to four years old, and uh, up there, up there, uh, their weight was around uh, 
eight kilograms, and uh, just after one dose, about six milligrams per uh, meter square uh, of calicomycin. So the top one um, on uh, my left hand side is normal. Uh, the, on the right side, uh, those monkeys who got calicomycin. By light microscopy, nothing happens. But if you go to see th those um, um, yellow areas, these are sinusoidal cells, and they are intact. They are sitting next to each other. But the, the monkeys who got calicomycin, that, in, uh, that intact sinusoidal uh, endothelial cells, they are gone. So th th that's actually the, where the injury is happening. And uh, the, uh, the um, E-panel, this is, a, again, um, uh, normal monkeys on F. Uh, use, uh, the yellow part, these are accumulated uh, platelets uh, in the sinusoid area. So that's why patients develop uh, thrombocytopenia, the plate accumulation. And this plate accumulation contributes to development of uh, VOD later on. This is not VOD. This is just an early uh, hepatic injury due to calicomycin. This is an um, electron microscopy. So on the, my left-hand side, you see that the endothelial cells are sitting, they are, uh, uh, sitting happy there. Uh, hepatocyte is there, and H stands for hepatocytes. But on the right-hand side is the messy situation in, in the sinusoid. You, the red arrow shows you platelets, and th there is derby there. This is the beginning of, of liver injury in, in patients. This is not VOD, but it can get, when it gets to VOD, then hepatocytes become atrophied and, and the fibrosis would be developing. They also work, actually look at the, those monkeys. They did bone marrow for them and the uh, megakaryocytes were looking good. They look at actually the level of the thrombopoietin. You know, thrombopoietin is made by the liver. It was a bit reduced, but not uh, in a uh, significant way. And they look at the plated activation. And actually, plated did not get activated uh, in, in those monkeys who got calicomycin. So this activated endothelial cell in the sinusoid space, uh, th that's where the mess starts. And uh, the inflammatory markers go up, and platelets start accumulating. And when they are detached, so they, uh, those um, hepatocytes uh, uh, get uh, exposed, uh, and the normal anatomy uh, gets distorted, and these patients could progress or, uh, to uh, developing chronic liver disease and, and cirrhosis. So uh, toxic metabolites generated by calicomycin can uh, cause damage to the sinusoidal endothelial cells and hepatocytes in the hepatic um, uh, acids. And uh, the, the, the gap in the sinusoidal barrier, so the debris get into the space of this, and um, uh, there would be um, a narrowing of the venous lumen and uh, reduction of the sinusoidal venous outflow, and then the portal hypertension, uh, uh, enlarged spleen, uh, ascites, the whole uh, mess of a patient with advanced chronic liver disease. So uh, uh, we hypothesized that calicomycin is associated with liver injury, and we propose to call it calicomycin syndrome. It has clinical uh, manifestations, right upper quadrant, pain, my, my patient who developed it as, after the first uh, uh, infusion of, uh, uh, of uh, I know, they can have lethargy, liver enzymes go up, and it's interesting that it's, you are not going to see like 10 times upper limit of normal, it could be just one or two times upper limit of normal, and the imaging is abnormal, and the early pathologic manifestation is sinusoidal congestion, which is reversible if you, you know, hold it, and uh, SOS is the advanced stage. So what are the practical points? Uh, obviously, hepatotoxic drugs should be avoided. Uh, this includes alcohol. So when I talk to my uh, patients, uh, those who are, uh, I, I think it's even for any chemotherapy, uh, any patient who's getting chemotherapy, it's better to shy away from alcohol. And then if a patient with uh, getting INO is going to have ALO, it's better to limit it to only two cycles if it's uh, possible. During your um, uh, clinic visit, it's important to pay attention with ab to abdominal pain, particularly right upper abdominal pain and, and tenderness, uh, altered mental status, falls, uh, you know, is important, uh, elevated liver enzymes, uh, elevated TBD, uh, thrombocytopenia, and these are, uh, could be uh, indicative of developing liver toxicity. 
Uh, I would get a, a, you know, like in, in oncology, for example, when we want to do adriamycin, we, we get a baseline 2D echo. I, I think if you are going to use uh, INO or GO, we should have a baseline uh, liver ultrasound because you, you could compare it. I think that that's what I, I have started doing. That. And th there is some data uh, that you, if you could use the uh, ulza diol. Uh, um, for for uh, prophylaxis, we use urzadiol uh, as prophylaxis for for VOD in allo patients and and auto patients. But uh, I, I think patients who are uh, getting INO or GO, uh, uh, regardless of of uh, uh, transplant, they should uh, uh, 300 milligram twice a day is it, very tolerated. We should use that. And if you ask me, you know, I'm a leukemia physician. Blin or I know which one first. I, I, I believe in personalized treatment approach. Uh, not one size fits all. Uh, I don't think there is clear answer, but there are some examples. For example, uh, for Blin, you need to have CD19 uh, positive uh, ALL. So if CD19 negative, then you would uh, CD22 positive, you would use I know. Logistics, you know, I, I cover um, Riverside County and San Bernardino County, and there are like, I have patients from India, and no home health is going to go there, or home delivery pharmacy, so you're using Blin over there is impossible. So I know it is it's good. I know it's in day one, eight fifteen, one hour infusion, so that uh, from, uh, from logistical point of view, it's very good compared with, with Blin, that you need a 24 pump for, for 28 days. Uh, inability to tolerate CRS, I feel like uh, patients who, you, uh, they, they, they can have like severe transaminitis, they could get a seizure. I have had patients like Blin who got seizure. So th if you are worried about uh, um, CRS or if patients are not tolerating uh, CRS, then um, I know it would be a, a good example. High tumor burden, if the patients have high tumor burden, um, uh, you get more toxicity with Blin. You know, you get more uh, CRS. Uh, CNS symptoms or disease, extra medullary disease also, Blin might not work. Uh, uh, in my mind, I know uh, would be a better option. So if I want to compare I know and Blin, I, I talk about uh, I know toxicity, but I would like to, uh, you know, it's, I'm, I'm using it. Uh, I, I think we need to be a smart how to use I know, particularly in like my geographical area. I know it's still, I believe, a, a good remedy for patients with the ALL. Uh, but pay attention, like the activity I know is long, half life is around 12 days, but uh, billing is only two hours. That's why you need a 24 hour uh, 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 infusion for 28 days. The target is different for uh, I know is CD22, for billing is CD19. Mechanism obviously different. Uh, as I mentioned, I know is a chemotherapy conjugated antibody, but uh, for billing, uh, you, you need patients' normal T cells. Convenience uh, um, uh, uh, is important. Uh, so uh, day one, eight, 15, every 21 days. But as I mentioned, Blin is a 24 hour infusion for 28 days. Major toxicity that you need to remember, particularly for the fellows or if you are treating ALL patients, is liver toxicity. But for Blin, is CRS and neurotoxicity. Uh, this is my acknowledgement. I mentioned earlier, you know, taking care of uh, cancer patients, it, you, you need a village. Uh, uh, it's uh, not only physicians, pharmacies, nurses, PAs, uh, dietitians, social workers, and uh, together we can uh, make a difference. And this is an old saying, whoever saves a life, saves the world. I'm going to stop here and happy to answer questions. <laughs>